Hey guys, what's up? Today, I wanted to talk about loving someone from a distance. Because we don't hate people, remember? Like, it's not, it's not okay to hate people. Only those who are like just truly unlovable people are hateful people. And each and every person out there that's managed to find this message definitely is a lovable person, like without a doubt. So it's not in your best interest to hate people because that puts, that puts, uh, that puts too much negativity out into the, into the stratosphere, if you will. You're putting out those negative vibes and like you might cause that person to have more negativity in their life, thus creating a feedback loop and giving you more to quote unquote hate. No. The best solution for that is to love them from a distance, all right? Remember your boundaries. Remember how important it is to keep yourself safe first, all right? It's never ever okay to let someone else's abject negativity begin to influence you. You have to make sure that you are your own sovereign being, that you're taking care of yourself first that said, if you're in a situation to where you're not being negatively impacted, that doesn't mean obviously you shouldn't be going out of your way to try and fix their problems. They chose to go through what they're going through, either consciously or their soul chose to go through that experience. And it's their choice consciously how they want to interpret and react to that experience. It's your job just to love them from a distance, okay? And you know, and if, if it happens to be a person that's close to you and you have to start separating yourself a bit, it's okay. You know, I had said, I'm pretty sure in a previous video that I had made that, you know, sometimes the people in your life are going to have to just be let go a little bit, going to have to put some space between you and them. And if they start taking notice of that and they want to put some more energy into rectifying what they've done wrong, then that's great. That's their prerogative. You know, I kind of see it like uh, like if you're cooking a stew and they've oversalted the stew. Well, if they want to go and try and put some more sugar and some sweetness or whatever it may be into that stew to try and even out the flavors, then that's great. But you can really only do that so many times before you have this incredibly oversaturated meal that no one wants to eat. That's kind of like a relationship, you know? You're putting in some seasoning, they're putting in some seasoning, and you're trying to make something that's delicious, right? But if they just keep ruining your meal over and over and over again, well, sometimes you need to go and find a different partner to, like, cook with. A bit of a strange analogy out there, uh, right there. I know I'm starting to get a little hungry. I'm going to make something here to eat soon. Remember that loving from a distance is probably one of the most powerful things that you can do for someone that has wronged you. Uh, it's for them specifically, one of the best things you can do for yourself is separating yourself from them, removing yourself from that negative or toxic atmosphere that they're generating. But after you've successfully done that, one of the best things that you can actually do for them is to love them from a distance. You know, if you're a religious person, pray for them, but also, understand and acknowledge that they are choosing either themselves consciously or their soul subconsciously choosing to go through that experience. Never try and deprive them of that. Always validate them for what they're going through. Remember that you are not in their shoes and even if you have the empathy to put yourself in their shoes, you never truly can know and understand what they're experiencing validate their experience. That doesn't mean that you have to acknowledge it as just. That just means that you're giving them the validation for their unique subjective experience, something that each and every person, and so far as I'm concerned, each and every living sentient creature deserves. Validation for their experience as a living sentient being. You are choosing to continue being with them in a kind of a spiritual sense by loving them from a distance. You're saying that I will never let you go through this alone, 
but I can't allow you to impede in my progress through life. It's setting rock solid boundaries for yourself while also giving the most help to someone that you possibly can. And don't uh, insignificant, in, do not make loving them from a distance to be an insignificant matter. Because just because we can't see the energy that we're putting out into the air, into the atmosphere, understand and even feel that you're doing so much for them. You're doing so much more for them than probably many other people in their lives have ever truly done. All right? You're choosing to still give them a chance to go through their experience in a way that at least as you would perceive it, would be better suited, all right? And if they choose not to go that route and continue being the way that they are, that's their choice as well. You know, life here on this wonderful planet is, wonderful and tragic planet, is really a story of unbecoming. You're unbecoming everything that you thought you were and discovering who you truly are. Never deny someone the right to unbecome what they're not so that they can realize what they are. And sometimes their journey is just a lot more, a lot longer or drawn out or just in certain perceptions more painful or more struggle inducing than other people's. And that's their choice. Maybe they chose to go through that more difficult experience. Maybe they chose to wallow and be in the negativity for so much longer so that their realization either in this life or in another one you know, far in the future so that that realization of what they truly are is all that much more grand you don't really know how many lifetimes you me or they or anyone has ever truly gone through to get to the to get to the point to where they're at now you know, all of us can remember our moments of awakening and realization and all of that great jazz. It, it, it truly is a moment and several moments, I'm sure, to be remembered. Allow them the chance to make quote unquote awful decisions so that they can have an unbelievably grand experience of waking up whenever it happens. There's nothing wrong with things that you've gotten wrong in your past. There is no issue with it, so long as you're acknowledging that it's wrong, so long as you are able to say it truthfully, broadly, and with a straight face, because that's how you know you've grown from it. That's how you know you've become better because of it. The struggles, the negativity, the strife, the trials and tribulations, they are all there so that we can experience this process of realization of who we truly are at our core. You know, the process that I have been and currently still am going through is quite a significant one based on my own, you know, uh, perceptions of my past, just like I'm sure yours is just as significant for you. Try and put that feeling of how significant your specific experiences were that led you up to your moment into that feeling into the place of how their negativity could be bringing them up to that beautiful moment of blossoming. All right, it's absolutely one of the most, I guess, I'll use the term, righteous things that you can do for someone. And like I said, if you're a religious type person, don't be afraid to pray for them even. Like, keep them in your thoughts. Meditate on their actions. Anything that helps you get your get you closer to your core is going to be better for you in the long run, of course, but it will also help to dispel any of the negative air that's come from uh, these people and the issues that they've brought up. Loving from a distance. It's okay to do that. In meditation, sometimes I will meditate on some of the things that I perceive to be negative to me. And after I finish that, those few moments of contemplation, however long it may be, I will sit there and I will say in my head, I acknowledge and validate them because 
they chose that experience. Just like I chose the, if I got angry, you know, in that moment based on that person, not even angry towards them, just in my own head, I got a little bit upset. I will say I chose, I acknowledge and validate that feeling that I had because I chose it. And now I'm choosing to acknowledge and validate them and acknowledge and validate my feelings. Remember that you are the ultimate sovereign being of your life and how you react to every situation. And it doesn't matter if you didn't instinctively have the reaction that you wanted in that moment. You can always go back and forgive yourself and forgive them. There's always a chance. There is no time. Time is an illusion. There is only the now. If you forgive someone right now, if you forgive yourself right now for how you reacted to what someone did to you, then you've done it right now. You've successfully completed what you were supposed to do right now. It supersedes what you did before because this linear progression that we go through, it's, 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 it's a moment of building up to that thing we're supposed to achieve. All right, never feel, feel like you failed. Never feel like failure is even a truth. I know I've said all truths are true, I don't think failure it fits in that category, not necessarily because that's an exception to the rule, but because failure is not an end. It's not an outcome. Failure is only something that allows you to see, to rectify your path, all right? If you're lost in, in uh, the woods, you're putting some marks on some trees so you know uh, where you've been and you've circled back around and you found one of your marks on your trees y Sure, you failed finding your way out of that forest that time But now you know not to go back that way again. You've rectified the path that you're taking Failure is not an outcome if you failed then that just means that you overcame another obstacle That obstacle will show up again and you'll jump even higher and be able to successfully jump over it the next time all right, remember your power as a sovereign being, as one of the most powerful beings in existence, as the most powerful being in existence. All is one, one is all. You are the one, you are the all. Just remember, it's okay. It's okay to forgive yourself if you've done something wrong, to forgive someone else. It's okay to remove toxicity from your life, and it's okay to still love them. You don't have to get absorbed into the hatred, even if some bad things have happened to you. It can be difficult to forgive someone, but it is not impossible. And I want you to realize that power that you have within you. I want you to understand that you've had it in you since the beginning all right uh, I know that was a uh, probably quite a bit of rambling right there if you couldn't tell I've had some stuff happen to me but that's okay because I meditated on it and I found my power within I forgave them I forgave how I reacted to the situation and now I'm going to move forward in a state of validation and forgiveness, acknowledgement and realization. And I want you all to really do your best to do that as well. So that's all I got to say right now. Just had to get a lot of that stuff off my mind. Um, again, the whole, the whole shebang, like, comment, subscribe. If y'all got any questions, please let me know. I'm really happy that you know, anyone out there can find any benefit from these at all. Um, and I'll talk to y'all again soon. Much love, much happiness, much joy, namaste, and all that good shit.